So in our last video, which I will put a link to in the description below, we were able to set 10,000 particles on a moving avatar. And now we're gonna implement some forces into this system. So I'm gonna go into my special effects folder. I'm gonna take my skeletal mesh emitter and I'm just gonna duplicate that. And I'm gonna call this shadow. Now in this emitter, instead of using the update reproduction sprite, I'm going to for now, disable that. And I'm gonna add in curl noise force, which we did in an earlier video with the static mesh. We have some unmet dependencies because this needs to occur before solve forces and velocity. So easy fix, just there we go. And so now, let's zoom in here. If I look at my avatar, I think I'm looking at it from the back. Am I in orbit mode? Yes, okay. Orbit mode is the worst. All right, there we go. And if I go and hit play, whoosh, there we go. I kind of like that. And like we did in previous videos, you can play with noise strength, you can play with noise frequency. So we can really turn this up here. That's kind of fun. Uh, we can play with noise frequency, which is gonna change how these particles are dispersing. don't like that. Let's try. And I just like trying different numbers and seeing what I like. Oh, that's fun. Okay, sure. Let's include that. And one thing that I think would be fun is as these particles sort of dissolve, it would be nice if that happened and then the color um, kind of faded to translucent as well. So Let's see, I was setting the color and in initialized particle. So I'm gonna add color into update. And I'll just do color. And we're going to add a color from curve. So we're gonna start with that pink. And let's move these. And with this stop right here, this is my opacity. So I'll have it over time fade opacity. So if I hit play, it's gonna fade. Ooh, you can't even see they're dispersing so much. Okay, so over time they're losing opacity. Great. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna go back into my system for a skeletal mesh and we're going to add that emitter. And I also want to make sure that my user exposed variable is attached to that as well. Great. Very nice. So I'm gonna hit play here. And we'll just have all of these particles, I believe every seven seconds or so coming off, yeah. What's nice is there's already some physics built in. So the more she's moving, the more they're really gonna start to fly. I'm gonna change one thing really quick here. I think this might be a little bit better. Give this a shot. Uh, no, that's not quite right. Let's give this a quick try. Oh. That's interesting. I think the strength is just way too strong. All right, I'm gonna stop messing around with this. Okay, I like that. All right, let's give this a shot. So I'm gonna hit play. And I have my character moving. And then it's just gonna like fling some particles. Nice. 
So this is going to happen every seven seconds routinely because in my emitter, if we look at the emitter state, the loop behavior is infinite and it's, okay, it's every 10 seconds, I'm going to be getting a new round of this shadow. But what if I wanted to add this in programmatically? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this emitter and I'm going to be adding it to its own, oops, excuse me. I'm going to be taking this emitter and I'm going to be adding it to its own system. Okay, so I'm going to, let's save all here. I'm going to create a new system and I'm going to be adding the shadow emitter. And there it is. All right and we'll call the shadow. And in our skeletal mesh, I'm going to get rid of the shadow emitter here. Okay. And I'm also gonna get rid of this in the world outliner and we're gonna handle all of this using the blueprint. So I'm gonna make a new folder called blueprints and naming conventions in Unreal blueprint always starts with BP particles. And so I'm going to bring in a skeletal mesh component and that's going to be the same skeleton I've been using before. I'll set the animation. All right. And then she's moving. Great. And then we're also going to bring in Niagara. And I don't want this to be a child of the skeletal mesh. I want it to be a sibling. So note the indentation is the same. It's not a child. And we're going to set this system to the skeletal mesh. Great. And just like before, the skeletal mesh, I don't, I don't need to see this. I just really care about the particles. So I'm gonna make that invisible. Um, in the blueprint by default, we already have the always tick pose and refresh bone option. So we're good there. So let's go into the event graph and I'm gonna bring in Niagara and I want to spawn system attached and I'm going to add, where'd it go? I'm going to add my shadow system to the existing skeletal mesh particle system. So for system template, we're gonna look for that shadow system. There we go. And let's do this on, oh, I don't know, um, seven, why not? You can do this on any key. And because I'm using a actor blueprint and not a level blueprint, I'm going to have to use enable input for that key to register. Okay. And one quick thing we're going to fix here. So if I were to add the shadow component onto my existing particle system. If we look at the shadow emitter, it's gonna loop infinite time. So if I hit seven, I'm gonna get a new system every 10 seconds, even if I only hit the seven key once. So I'm gonna switch the loop behavior to just once. And we should be all set. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to bring in my new blueprint into my world. And we'll hit play. And now every time I hit the seven key, we should get a new system. And I could hit it a bunch of times. And that could be fun. I could wait as long as I want for a very dramatic moment. Maybe right here. And now I have total freedom for when I add this forced particle system on top of my skeletal mesh. All right, very cool. So the last video we're gonna do in this series is ribbon tracing. So that will be the next video and I hope you check it out.